Hey everyone, it's Kayla, and today I thought I'd take you on my journey of comreeing my bookshelves. The comreeing method involves just taking everything unread, putting it on the floor, physically taking it off your shelf so that it's not tempting just to keep it on there, um, just so that you evaluate it off the shelf in a different setting to see if you really want to put it back on there. I shouldn't have to say this, but if I unhaul like your favorite book, I am sorry. It's just not for me, or I decided not to read it, or maybe I'll check it out from the library. It is nothing against you. You can like whatever you like. That's fine. That It's fine to like different things. Just want to put that disclaimer out there. I counted how many books I own physically, and I own 433, and only have read 233 of those on my shelf right now. My goal is to get rid of at least 100. So I just went through and took off books that at a glance I know that I'm gonna get rid of. So that's this pile right here. I have Paper Girls, I just lost interest. Truth Witch and Win Witch, I just lost interest like I said. I've owned the Vampire Academy series for years. Like it even made the move here when I moved like four years ago. So. If I haven't read it by now, people, it's not getting read. And then down here are some V.E. Schwab books, Victoria Schwab, and Zodiac. And yeah, I am saying goodbye to these. I'm also doing this to my DVD collection, and then I'm taking all the books and DVDs to Second and Charles, which is this massive trade-in store where they also sell, like, other books, games, um, movies, and stuff like that and Funko Pops and you can get double store credit or you can walk away with half the cash. I'm probably gonna do store credit so that I can buy Christmas presents at this store. So the books are gonna go to a good home and hopefully find owners that appreciate them more than I have in the last few years. So this is what my shelf looks like after I pulled all of the unread books off and they're all in piles on my floor right there. <laughs> and I am just feeling so overwhelmed, there's so many. So I live with my grandmother, I help support her, and she just came in and saw all the books on my floor and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm getting rid of like half of them because I haven't read them in years and I'm never going to read them. And she's like, hey, you'd be surprised. I'm like, no, it's just never gonna happen. And she's like, well, what about this book and this book? And I'm like, nanny, just let go of my books, leave the room, just pretend you never saw this. She's a hoarder. She's like a massive hoarder. Like she'll just keep everything because she sees value in everything, which is not a bad thing, but if I want to get rid of my stuff, let me get rid of my stuff, okay? Okay, like, who? I almost wish that I could lock my bedroom door so that when I leave, she doesn't come in here and take my books for herself so that they don't get thrown away. But see, they're not getting thrown away. She doesn't get it, she doesn't get it, but yeah, so that's a thing. Hey everyone, so it's about seven weeks after I filmed my last vlog clip and <laughs> thought it was finally time to go through these books that have been on my floor for seven weeks. They actually left imprints on my carpet. I can't say that I'm surprised because I'm a procrastinator for life, but it's how the cookie crumbles sometimes for me, AKA all of the time. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these books and like kind of think out loud and I hope you enjoy watching that. <laughs> I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with the books that I'm keeping because currently I am literally surrounded by piles of books so I'm pretty sure I'm just going to toss them up on my bed and the books that I'm not keeping I'll just toss in the corner over there. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. So The Song of Achilles I'm definitely keeping. I own it on Kindle and audiobook and I'll probably read it on the Kindle, but I want it for my library because I know I'm going to love it. Ugh. The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson is the third book in the Remnant Chronicles. I read the first two, and it's been a while since I read the first two, so I'm probably going to have to, like, reread or read, like, recaps of them because I don't remember everything. But I know I definitely love this series, and I'm definitely going to keep the third book because why wouldn't I? Uh, The Rose and the Dagger and The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. Uh, I mean... It's fantasy. It's like a desert fantasy and a lot of my friends love it so I feel like I have to keep it. <laughs> I've owned it. Like, I mean I, I've owned these books since they were debut books since they came out. So it has been a few years but I just feel like I love it so I just need to keep on keeping them. And then I have Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier. I heard this is not as good. So I'm not inclined to keep it as much. Uh, this will definitely go 
in the goodbye pile, I think. Undertow by Michael Buckley. He spoke at the Boston Teen Author Festival that Sam from Boston Tomes and I attended like two years ago and he was hilarious and I bought his book while I was there. It's middle grade and it's, I think it's about people or sea creatures inhabiting like an amusement park, like civilization. Um, I never read it. <laughs> so I feel like I'm not going to read it. Probably. I just bought it on impulse because I really liked the way he talked and everything. Yeah, I'm going to unhaul this. So then we have The School for Good and Evil sequels. I have read the first book with a bunch of my friends. And at the time, like, we enjoyed reading it. But it took a long time for us to get through it for some reason. And it's been a couple years. And I've kind of lost interest. So... I think I'm unhauling this trilogy. So then we have Graceling, which I know I'm absolutely going to love if I ever read it. I've owned this since like the beginning of my channel. That is shameful. Like I know I'm going to love this. I love classic YA fantasy. So why have I not read this yet? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm definitely keeping this. I know the audiobook is on Scribed, so I'm going to be listening to it soon I think. AKA you'll probably see this in another video like this in three years. Two Dark Reigns I'm obviously keeping. I just haven't read it yet. It's one of my favorite series right now. Okay, Shadow Scale by Rachel Hartman is the sequel to Serafina, which I really enjoyed back in the day. I read it like the first year I was booktubing. And it's like a YA fantasy with dragons. Hello. Uh, I just never read the sequel. And I feel like it's been so long I'd have to reread Serafina. And I also saw reviews on Goodreads for this and they're not that good. But I really want to read it someday because I really enjoyed Serafina. And how can I give up this wonderful book cover? Like, it's so blue and shiny. Do I keep it? Yes, I'm keeping it. So then we have the Across the Universe trilogy by Beth Revis. And I hauled these, like, the second year of my channel. You know, back in the day when you first joined BookTube and you just buy all the books? That was me. That was me. I might try it on audiobook, but I think I'm going to unhaul them. It's time. It's time to say goodbye. So then we have Uprooted by Naomi Novik. And Sam from Thoughts on Tomes loves this book. And she actually gave this to me for my birthday about three years ago now. And never read it yet. <laughs> I did read Naomi Novik's first book in her Temeraire series about the Napoleonic Wars with Dragons. And I really enjoyed that. So I'm definitely keeping this. And I plan on reading it someday. In the future. I'm not saying soon anymore because that doesn't happen people. Okay so then we have the Seven Realms series which is an old school YA fantasy series. I just don't know like will I ever actually read them? I started to. I got that far. <laughs> like I that was about two years ago I think I tried to start them. This is tough. This is tough. Like what do you do about a whole series that you own because like you don't know. Like I I'm gonna keep these. So then we have books three, four, and five in the Fable Haven series. I read the first two books. I enjoyed them, but they're not my favorite middle grade series of all time. It's been a couple years since I read book two. I'm keeping this. So far, <laughs> I've unhauled seven things. And my goal is 100. It's not going well. <laughs> oh, and just to let you know, I'm using some of my unread books as a tripod, so I'm definitely keeping the Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson, even though I've owned it for like four years. I just need to give it a chance someday. And plus, it's the UK edition, the nice white versions, and they're just so beautiful. So, yeah, definitely keeping those suckers. I'm also keeping the first three books in the Expanse series by James S.A. Corey. Um, I'm definitely going to give Leviathan Wakes a try soon. I shouldn't use the word soon, but <laughs> that's what I say in my videos. I have books two, three, and four in the Temeraire series by Naomi Novik. I loved the first book, so I'm definitely going to keep these three as well. I'm unhauling The Queen of the Tearling. It's been a while. And then I have The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon, which I am keeping because I enjoyed The Bone Season. And I have this little pamphlet on the merits of unnaturalness, which goes with The Bone Season. Definitely keeping it. I also have An Arc of the Song Rising, which is the third book. Um, probably the last arc I will ever get because I do not keep up with my channel when I am busy. Uh, oh, what do I do? I'll keep it. I'm Shadow Hunter Trash, but am I Shadow Hunter Trash enough to keep the short story collections in hardcover because I saw that this was also available for Audible 
and I really enjoyed listening to the uh, Lord of Shadows audiobook. So I think I'm gonna listen to like this and the Bane Chronicles on audio. It's like a nostalgia factor for me at this point because I literally like read City of Bones when it came out in like what 07 I think. They just look so pretty on the shelf. The spines look so gorge. Shadowhunter trash. I'm keeping them. I'm keeping them. I think the time has come to say goodbye to Empire of Dust and Legacy of Kings by Eleanor Herman. Uh, Furyborn, I'm definitely keeping because I just got this for my birthday this summer and I'm hearing really good things and I'm really interested to read it because of the way it's told. I think it's told from the point of view of a character in like the present time and then a character in, like a thousand years before that. So I'm definitely here for that. And yeah, I would not unhaul this yet because it's like brand new. <laughs> so then we have the Infernal Devices. Is this manga? No, I think somebody told me or corrected me in a video once. It's not manga, it's it's something else, but it's kind of similar to manga and, and style. Like it's, it looks like that. It's the entire Infernal Devices trilogy like that. And since the Infernal Devices is my favorite of the Shadowhunter books, I think I just want to keep these. I think it'd be a fun way to revisit the series. And uh, yeah, I don't see myself parting with these because one, I like graphic novels and stuff like that. And two, I like the Infernal Devices. And three, I'm Shadowhunter trash. Like I said, I have a shelf over there. So I just want to maintain my shelf because it sparks joy. So then we have books two and three in the Starbound trilogy. Is that what it's called? It says a Starbound novel, but book one was These Broken Stars. I haven't really heard much buzz about the second and third books at all. And in order to continue with the series I feel like I would have to reread these broken stars even though it's a companion trilogy like there's elements in book two that you're like oh I remember that from book one and I want to be able to enjoy that and I wouldn't at this point because I would have to reread book one I ain't got that kind of time anymore so I think I'm unhauling this trilogy and then we have Crystal Storm by Morgan Rose this is the fifth book in the Fallen Kingdom series definitely keeping this I know books five and six have not gotten the greatest reviews even from people who have loved the series in the past but this series has such a nostalgia factor for me it also has such a like a friendship factor and the memories of reading this series with my friends are just irreplaceable so I will never get rid of the Fallen Kingdom series and I'm actually asking for the sixth and final book for Christmas so yeah I'm definitely keeping this and then we have The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemison, the queen um I'm actually unhauling this but it's because I'm asking for the Dream Blood duology in a bind up for Christmas then we have The Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky obviously I'm keeping these because I loved the fifth season so much I'm also keeping Sky then Thunderhead I just got these for my birthday uh they're by Neil Schusterman and I've heard really good things about this series I'm also keeping The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I've owned this for years now, but it's Sam from Thoughts on Tome's favorite book, and I cannot unhaul it without reading it. And I'm probably going to listen to it on audiobook because Jim Dale narrates the book, and he is amazing at the Harry Potter books. So, uh, yeah, I should definitely read that soon or listen to it soon. And we're at a half an hour and counting of footage. Then we have The Trials of Morrigan Crow. The SFF live show people raved about this and it's middle grade and it kind of has that nostalgic Harry Potter factor for real. So I'm definitely not unhauling this. I just got it and I plan on also picking up the sequel in November or asking for it for Christmas. So yeah, definitely not getting rid of this. Um, then we have Dream Strider. Honestly, I feel like this is about a girl who like goes into dreams and everything. I got it a couple years ago. I think it was actually gifted to me, so I apologize. I think Lainey got it for me. I just have lost interest in reading it, and it's been a couple of years, and if I haven't gotten to it now, I probably never will, so I'm definitely unhauling it. Then we have this Savage Song, which I've heard mixed things about this series. I've actually heard mixed things about V. Schwab or Victoria Schwab in general. Um, yeah, I'm just going to get rid of it because I just have so much stuff to read, and I have to draw the line somewhere. And then we have Vengeance Road by Aaron Bowman, and... I started reading this, yeah, I got to page 49, and, oh, it came with a cool bookmark. I might keep the bookmark. I'm not going to keep the book, but I'm going to keep the bookmark. <laughs> so then we have A World Without You by Beth Revis, and she actually signed this at the Boston Teen Author Festival. And I feel like this has mental health elements in it, so I think I'm going to keep it because it still interests me, and I probably will read it someday. Both my feet are asleep. Whew. 
The Journey to Dragon Island I am definitely keeping because it's a sequel to one of my favorite reads of the year last year, The Voyage to Magical North. So yes, definitely going in the keep pile. I'm definitely keeping these two even though I haven't read them yet. I started to read both of them, got about 100 pages in and just either was slumping or just didn't pick it back up, but not because it wasn't good. Um, I really enjoy Rick Reardon, so I know I'm going to keep these. So then I have the Spiderwick Chronicles, and it's a complete bind-up of the series. I mean, it's a middle grade series, and it probably wouldn't take very long to read. There's also really cool illustrations that I just realized. I buy this shit, or get it for Christmas, and don't even, like, look through it. What is wrong with me? I'm going to keep this as well. I really enjoy middle grade. I don't know. It makes me feel all warm and cozy inside. Okay, so then we have the Beyonders <laughs> series by Brandon Mole. And... You apparently should read Fable Haven before you read these. And I haven't finished Fable Haven yet, as you saw when I threw it back there. So this was like an impulse buy. I feel like Connor and Lindsay from Lindsay Ray back in the day like raved about this series. So I was like, I'm going to buy it. And I did. And it's sat on my shelf ever since. So I think I am unhauling this for now. And then if I like Fable Haven once I complete it, you know, in a thousand years... I will see about picking this up. I heard it's better than Fable Haven, which makes me like want to read it more than Fable Haven, but I don't like reading things out of order of the way they should be read. So we're going to unhaul these for now. Officially at 40 minutes, and we haven't even gotten to my unread comics and graphic novels. <laughs> this is going to be great. These are the first two books in the Neapolitan novels. Is that what they're called? I think so. HBO is actually creating a television show about this series. And I did start it, like, a while ago. I'm not going to unhaul these because I've heard amazing things from Mari from My Name is Marinas and Max from Well Done Books. And if it's an HBO show, I'm sure I'm going to give it a chance. So I definitely want to save these and read them, finally, at some point. <laughs> Okay, I'm also unhauling the 100,000 Kingdoms trilogy by N.K. Jemisin because just like The Killing Moon, I'm asking for the bind up for Christmas. So it's not that I don't want to read them because she's a queen. Um, it's because I'm getting or I'm asking for another edition. So these are going in the unhaul pile. I'm also unhauling Stephen King, The Eyes of the Dragon. This is a fantasy book that Stephen King wrote. And Interestingly enough, the villain in this is the villain that appears throughout his books, Flag. Um, he was also in uh, The Stand, which I read, and he was also featured in the Dark Tower series, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I'm unhauling this because I've owned it for years and I've never read it, so. Okay, this is a doozy, guys. Like, I know I would love this series if I just gave it a shot, but this has been on my shelf. Ooh! I'm gonna keep it because my fantasy heart won't let go. And then The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet I'm definitely keeping. I've heard nothing but really good things and my sci-fi heart will be so happy. And I'm actually getting rid of Deathless by Catherine M. Valenti because it's just been on my shelf for a while. I heard it's kind of ambiguous, like you don't really know what's going on and I hate being confused when I'm reading. So then we have the first two books in the Fever series and I know Sarah Jane might be screaming somewhere that I haven't read these yet. Um, I don't know that I want to keep them. I'm going to unhaul these. Then we have The Lies of Locke and Lamora, which I still haven't read yet. I know, I know, I know. It's terrible. So I know I'm going to enjoy it and love it. So I want it in my physical collection. So I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. I'll Give You the Sun. Never really going to read it probably. And if I do, I know Scribed has the audiobook, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to unhaul this. Hyperbole and a Half. I'm keeping this because I suffer from depression and anxiety, so I think that I will enjoy this book because the humor and the cartoons and stuff are really true to life and can be really relatable based on, like, the few pages that I have read, so I'm definitely going to keep this. Now I'll tell you everything. So when I was younger, I grew up on the Alice McKinley series by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. And basically, literally each book was like half a grade. So like it started with her in sixth grade. And then she moved on to seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade. To I grew up with Alice. Um, <laughs> and this book is pretty much an epilogue book of the series. It takes her from being 17 in high school to age 60. And like kind of like snapshots of her life and stuff like that. And I like I bought it obviously for nostalgia purposes. I just never read it yet. The Alice books were so influential in my life at the time. Like I loved them and I grew up on them. And 
they'll always like hold a special place in my heart. So I, I definitely have to keep this. I, I definitely have to keep this. Along those same lines, this is Royal Wedding by Meg Cabot. And this is a Princess Diaries novel about Mia's wedding. And I think it's an adult book. Um, and I love the Princess Diaries series growing up. So I feel like I need to keep this as well and eventually read it at some point because, yeah, the Princess Diaries books held a special place in my heart as well. I also recently purchased Curiously Happy this year. Um, I just haven't read it yet. I know it says a lot about depression and anxiety in a true to life and relatable way that makes you laugh. Um, and I definitely need that. So definitely keeping this one. And then we have Hungry Heart by Jennifer Weiner. This is Adventures in Life, Love, and Writing. I think it's an autobiography that she wrote, and I love Jennifer Weiner books. Love them. Um, I've read everything she's ever written, and yeah, I will definitely be keeping this and reading it. And actually, it's an audiobook unscribed, so I plan to listen to it as well. So then we have the Troy series by David Jamel. This is a adult fantasy series based on the Trojan War, and hello, that ticks off all my boxes, so I'll be keeping this. Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. Uh, Fried Green Tomatoes is one of my favorite movies. I just never read the book and I bought this a couple years ago because I wanted to read the book. Never have, but I love historical fiction so I'm definitely keeping this one. Yeah, I've never read this or any Jane Austen for that matter. Definitely gonna keep this. Lily of the Nile by Stephanie Dre. This is the first book in her like Egypt series. And I'm kind of thinking this is like Kate Quinn's Rome series, which I absolutely love. It's like a soapy drama, historical fiction. Uh, so I'm definitely going to keep this. I'm not going to keep this one because I heard it's a really good audiobook. So someday if I do want to read it, I will listen to it and get freaked out. I have this really bad habit with series I really love. And when the final book comes out, you wait and wait for it so long. And then you don't read it. And then next thing you know, it's four years later. It'll always have a special place in my heart because for the second book, Never Fade, Lainey and I stood in a mosh pit at BookCon the first year that we met to get Never Fade signed by Alexander Bracken. Like, we were literally in a mosh pit, and I don't know. I feel like I'll probably check this out on audiobook just to finish the series someday, and it might not be as good as if I would have read it four years ago, but I definitely got to keep this because I did enjoy The Darkest Minds and Never Fade. And then we have Shades of Grey by Jasper Ford. This is a book set in the future where, like, you can see colors, and based on the colors you can see, that's the cast system, I think. I think that's what it's about. It's like a dystopian. I just purchased this over the summer Geekerella. Sometimes I'm just really in the mood for high school contemporary. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a nostalgia factor or a feel-good factor. But yeah, I just purchased this, so I'm definitely going to keep this one. Everything I Never Told You, obviously I'm keeping it because I love Little Fires Everywhere. Celeste Aang is amazing, so I just need to read it, and I'm definitely keeping it. Definitely keeping Americana as well. So funny story about this book. It's beautiful. I got it for Christmas two years ago. But I'm just not feeling it, and I know it's available on Scribe as an audiobook, so if I check it out, I'll probably do so by listening to it because I feel like listening to contemporary is really good. So I'm gonna unhaul this. Please don't kill me. I'm keeping The Identicals, Crazy Rich Asians, and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo because I just literally got these books this summer. I recently watched on Netflix The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society and it was so heartwarming and I heard the book's really good and my grandmother actually owned a copy of it so she gave it to me. Definitely gonna keep this one. So then we have the third and final book of The Magicians, and I really enjoyed the first two books. Actually, I wouldn't say enjoyed. The first book was interesting, and I feel like a lot of people feel that way. The second book was a step up, but the third book I feel like is going to bring it all home, and it's just so realistic in so many ways. Like, I really appreciate that. Like, uh, Sam and I, Buddy, read the first book before I stopped keeping up with it, and she got past me that's another topic of conversation but she and I said that literally this is how people would really be if there was magic in the world like it wouldn't be good enough they would still be depressed people and the characters are like totally unlikable most of them and it's just so realistic and I really really like that a lot about the series so I'm definitely gonna finish this someday it's just a matter of do I need to reread the first two can I get this on audio etc so I'm definitely gonna keep this so then we have City of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett I just bought this over the summer so I'm definitely keeping this. So then we have the Ugly series. <laughs> Don't you love when you just buy a box set or get a box set for Christmas and you're just like, well, that'll sit on my shelf for a while. 
um, four years now? Three years? My best friend got this for me, um, for Christmas one year. And I really do want to read these still. And actually, I think he just came out with a new book set in the world or set in, like, the same universe. So now I'm really interested to read them. Um, I think I'm going to try to read them on audio because I have more time, uh, for audiobooks because I drive so much for my job. But, yeah, I'm definitely going to keep this. Also by Scott Westerfeld, I have Behemoth and Goliath, which are the last two books in the Leviathan trilogy. And I read Leviathan... I read Leviathan, like, the third week that I had my channel, so over five years ago. And it's really interesting. It's like a World War One retelling with, like, the Darwinists versus Clankers. Like, they developed biological warfare, uh, like, weapons based on animal DNA, and it's just so fascinating. And this was actually before I got a Goodreads, too. I don't even think Leviathan was on my Goodreads. I don't think I want to unhaul these yet because I did enjoy the first one so we're gonna keep these for now so then we have the Ashfall trilogy which is basically a dystopian series if Yellowstone would blow up which could happen guys not gonna lie um I just never read it I heard it's devastating and really really good so I'm gonna keep these for sure because if I'm ever in that dystopian mood which I have been lately I might pick this up so now it's time to go through my comics and graphic novels that I haven't read yet Okay, so obviously I'm not unhauling Saga Volume 9. I literally, this is the last thing I just bought, so I just haven't read it yet, and I'm postponing it as long as possible because the writers are going on a break for a year, but, whew, how could I ever, ever unhaul Saga? Like, ow. Then we have Trillium by Jeff Lemire. Jeff Lemire wrote Sweet Tooth, which I absolutely loved. Still haven't read this yet, but I've heard good things, and it's a standalone comic, so we'll be keeping this one. So then we have Royal City by Jeff Lemire. Um, this is only volume one, and I haven't read it yet. Normally I give things one volume or two before deciding if I like it or not. Obviously Jeff Lemire wrote one of my favorite series of all time, so I'm definitely going to keep this. This is a Marvel comic, The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. I've heard really good things. I don't really like superhero comics that much. But I heard good things about Squirrel Girl. I might put this, like, on the side for right now. Not unhauling it, not keeping it, just to come back later to discuss. So then we have volumes 2 and 3 of Ms. Marvel. I'm gonna put these in the maybe pile, too. I recently reread volume 1 over the summer and actually liked it more the second time around. Um, it's just, there's, like, eight volumes out now, and I'm a huge Marvel person, so I feel like... I would enjoy the references and everything. I just haven't read Marvel comics. I'm a big, big fan of the MCU, the Marvel cin Cinematic Universe. So we'll put these in the maybe pile for now. I feel like we're going to have another clip going to the maybe pile. And that's going to be painful. I think this is like a Lost kind of deal. Like, I loved Lost. And I feel like this is like a group of kids who just get zapped to a mountain or a different planet or something. Maybe pile. So then we have the two Once Upon a Time graphic novels that I own. This one's not even opened. It's still in, like, the plastic wrap. I love Once Upon a Time. Well, let me rephrase that. I loved Once Upon a Time the first three seasons. The first three seasons only, let me clarify, before the writing went to shit. Um, I, like, look at her. Regina. My queen. How can I... Ugh. I'm gonna put these in the maybe pile. Okay. Uh, Watchmen, which is considered the greatest graphic novel of all time by a lot of people. Um, I'm obviously gonna keep this. I don't know when I'm gonna read it. This is like old school comic, kind of. I mean, I've heard really good things and also some mixed things, actually. But like the style of the comic is very like old school comic. <sighs> so then we have White Sand by Brandon Sanderson. I know that you're supposed to read other books in the Cosmere before you read this graphic novel and it's just beautiful like it's just beautiful and it's hardcover I'm keeping this for sure so then we have blue is the warmest color I've heard amazing things about this and it's how it's very depressing too <laughs> but um, I'm gonna keep this one as well I'm gonna keep this as well monstrous I'm definitely keeping birthright volume 4 I'm definitely keeping I love this series the Wicked and the Divine Volume 4, I'm definitely keeping, like, this series too. We won't talk about Volume 3. Uh -uh. 
Descender volumes one, two, and three. How do I get three volumes? Up to three volumes in my collection without finishing the first volume. Like, this is what I have to stop doing. And I have. I've really cut back, like, this year and last year on buying stuff. But it's by Jeff Lemire. And we all know how I love Jeff Lemire. And... Yeah, I'll keep these because I feel like I'm going to like this. A lot of my friends enjoy this series. Bitch Planet, I've lost interest, so I think I'm okay on hauling this. Rocket Girl, I've owned forever and haven't read it. And I don't hear anything about it. I'm not even sure there's a sequel. I'm okay with unhauling this. Wires and Nerve, which is the first Lunar Chronicles graphic novel about Ico. Of course I'm going to keep this. I can't believe I haven't read it yet. I love the Lunar Chronicles. So yeah, definitely keeping this. And this is the naked hardcover. I got rid of the slip jacket because look at this. It is beautiful. And we have the complete Persepolis. And this is an autobiography, Own Voices. I'm definitely going to keep this because, yeah, I definitely want to keep this. The complete mouse, which is like World War II retelling with rats and mouses, I think. Mouses. Mice. Uh, da, 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 da. Maybe file. Maybe <laughs> file. I know this is a keeper. Connor just got this for me for my birthday. It's literally like all of the Death Note volumes in one. Like, do you realize how thick this is? Like, it is crazy. <laughs> like, look at my head. I have a pretty big head. And then look at this. It's insane. Even more insane when you can see the pages. I mean, like, hello. <laughs> this is incredible. Like, such a cool addition. Like, I must say, it is heavy too. Ooh, can knock somebody out with that thing. Uh, then we have volumes two, three, and four of Children of the Whales. It's really good so far, very devastating, and I'll definitely keep up with the series. I think there's only 12 volumes in all, and now it's a Netflix series, um, an anime series, so yeah, I just want to read the volumes first before I watch the show. So then we have Orange, volume one, and I haven't read this. It's about friendship, I think, or... Letters from the Future. It's a contemporary kind of twist. Um, I don't really have interest in it anymore. So I'm going to unhaul this. Do you know how many times I featured this in a video? In a TBR for a readathon, a TBR for whatever reasons? Always. Always. And I haven't read it yet. Ugh! So apparently. The Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt is loosely based on this manga, All You Need Is Kill. I love that movie. So why am I not reading this yet? Like, I don't get it. It's been years since I owned it. I'm keeping it and I'm going to read it. I'm determined before I have another unhaul spree in a year or so. And then we have A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. There's just more stories that I'd rather read than this at this time. So I'm going to unhaul this. I'm sorry. Lady Castle Volume 1. Definitely gonna keep this. I just bought this in Boston when I was there in February. It's about like the knights like lose their battle and get killed so the ladies of the castle have to take over and defend themselves like the cooks and like the uh, maids and everything. So like I think I'm in for a good time so I'm definitely gonna keep this. I'm definitely keeping the Flintstones as well. I've heard amazing things and I just hauled this recently. Definitely keeping Making Comics by Scott McCloud. I just bought this. Literally, it's a comic book about making comics, and I'm just really interested, and I can't wait to read this, so it should be really good. So then we have Amulet, Volume 7. Definitely keeping this. I love Amulet. Uh, we have Delilah Dirk and the King Shilling, which is the second one. Love Delilah Dirk. Definitely keeping this. We have Cucumber Quest, Volume 1, The Donut Kingdom, definitely keeping this. So then we have The Nameless City and The Stone Heart by Faith Aaron Hicks. I first heard about this because of First Second, the publisher, they also do Delilah Dirk. And like when you're on Amazon, the Amazon recommends. And somebody like said this reminded them of like Avatar a little bit. So that's why I bought both of these. You know, back in the day when you just buy two things without reading the first one. It's a good time. It's a good time. Then Smile and Sisters by Raina Telgemeier. I love Raina Telgemeier's style and even though they're middle grade graphic novels, like I love them so much. So like I'm definitely keeping these. 
And of course, of course, I'm keeping volumes three and four of the Babysitter's Club series, which Raina Telgemeier is doing. So much nostalgia in these guys. Like the first two, so much nostalgia. I read the Babysitter's Club books growing up and now that they're in graphic novel form, it's so fun to revisit and then remember all the adventures that I was a part of when I read them when I was younger. And it's just so heartwarming. It makes me so happy. So I'm definitely keeping these. So then we have volume two of Phoebe and her unicorn, unicorn on a roll. The first one was really hilarious. It reminds me of Calvin and Hobbes, like modern day, and it's so great. So I'm definitely keeping this. Um, and then we have The Legend of Korra, Volume 1 of Turf Wars, which is the first comic part. But yeah, definitely keeping this, obviously. Princeless, Volume 1. And I've heard really good things about this. I just bought this, so obviously I'm keeping it. To finish off, <laughs> we have all four volumes of the Game of Thrones graphic novel. This depicts the entire first book of the series. I haven't read these but I just love owning them and I like the artwork that it's like different from the show. It includes more details from the books than the show does and it depicts the characters and elements in different ways than the show does. So that's really cool. It's a different reimagining and I will keep these definitely. And I thought this was gonna be it because I didn't hear any news, but recently I saw on Amazon the first volume for A Clash of Kings is out like it came out in October so I put that on my Christmas wish list so maybe someday I'll have all of the graphic novels that belong to a Game of Thrones universe so that'd be really cool and it would also be really cool if I had book six and seven just just gonna put that out there yeah oh the maybe pile I thought I was done I thought I was done okay so really quick the maybe pile keeping it's gonna be like split second decisions unhauling Keeping. I loved Once Upon a Time in its Prime, and I think these are the only two comics that are out of it, so I'm gonna keep these. This could be really good. This could be really good if it's like Lost. And it's volume one. I'm gonna try volume one and see what happens. I don't know if I'm really feeling it anymore. I'm gonna unhaul these. I'll try it, because I tried Ms. Marvel and it was okay. I'll try this. Give it a shot, it's volume one, because I heard a lot of people love it. And that is it for my comering of the books. And I don't think I hit 100. Okay, so I counted and I'm unhauling 76 things, which I'm really excited about. I'm really happy about that number. I know my goal was 100, but 76 is awesome. And I'm feeling really good and I'm glad I did this. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if there was a decision that you would have made differently. Uh, let me know if you read any of the books that I kept, and I will see you later with another video. Bye!